Welcome back to segment two of lecture six. We are still in chapter two and let's get some kinetic data for the reaction A goes to B. Kinetic data. So we need to know the rate of reaction and preferably as a function of X, yani as the reaction progresses. Applications of the design equations for continuous flow reactors. Now we are going to show how to size CSTRs and plug flow reactors from the knowledge of the rate of reaction at different conversion, yani from the knowledge of minus RA versus X, or from the knowledge of the values of the rate of reaction as the reaction progresses, meaning as the conversion increases. Okay, consider the isothermal gas phase isomerization. A goes to B. You are asked to go to the lab to study how the rate of reaction changes as the reaction proceeds, i.e. to find minus RA versus XA. The experiment shall be carried out, of course, in a batch reactor, right? You get the kinetic data from the batch reactor, just like you did in applied physical chemistry and also on other chemistry courses. So the experiment shall be carried out in a batch reactor under isothermal, isobaric, and isochoric conditions with pure A. Okay. What shall be measured and what shall be calculated? When you go to the lab, what do you measure and what do you calculate? Well, you know, you prepare your reactor and you charge it with your reactant and the reaction is started. And what do you measure? Well, I know first you will start the stopwatch, correct? So you will be measuring the time correct so as the time progresses and then as the time progresses you keep taking sample from the reaction mixture when you take the sample from the reaction mixture you subject it to an analytical chemistry method to measure its concentration okay so this is something measured right and then you can calculate the concentration can calculate the sorry the conversion you can calculate the conversion well how do you calculate the conversion well basically the conversion for a batch reactor is defined as na naught minus na divided by na naught right so this is something you calculate what about the rate of reaction how do you determine the rate of reaction well, in chemistry, or in applied physical chemistry, you did this, right? You plotted the concentration versus time, right? And the concentration was going this way. Okay, and so now we are interested in to identify the rate of reaction. How do we identify it? Well, we have a batch reactor, right? And what was the design equation for a batch reactor well the design equation for a batch reactor was as follows remember it was no input no output so we had ra times v equals dna accumulation dna by dt for this system where the volume is fixed the volume is fixed so we can write v as v naught Correct, or you can leave it as V, it's totally up to you. Okay, so we can rewrite this equation since V is constant, it can go inside the derivative. So we can write RA equals DNA divided by V by DT. Okay, and we know that NA divided by V is simply the concentration, right? So that is D C A by D T. So simply what you do if you want to calculate R A the rate of reaction, okay, or if 
you want minus RA, then you put a minus here. Then you take the derivative, the derivative of CA. So if you want the, the rate of reaction at time, let's say five minutes, okay? Here, this is time five minutes, okay? And five minutes, this is the concentration of A. If you want the rate of reaction at five minutes, you take the derivative of CA with respect to T. In this case, it will be this is the derivative. And here the value of this derivative, the slope, equals the rate of reaction at that given time. So likewise, so you start from time zero and you go all the way maybe to time 60 minutes and then you keep uh, measuring the concentration and from the concentration you keep calculating conversion and then you calculate the rate of reaction. Okay, so we went to the lab and we collected these kinetic data. So here we go. At zero conversion, meaning at time zero, obviously, that this is the initial rate of reaction. How did we find it? Well, basically, as I said, we at time zero, we looked at this and we took the derivative at the beginning, so at time zero for CA versus and that was the rate of reaction and then we repeated this for a different time okay at different time you have different conversion so the conversion is increasing as the reaction is progressing as the time is going on and what's happening to the rate of reaction well obviously the rate of reaction is changing it is decreasing why do you think the rate of reaction is decreasing as the reaction progresses well let's always remember what the rate of reaction is function of well, it's mainly function of concentration and temperature. The temperature is constant because I'm running the reaction isothermally. What's happening to the concentration of the reactant? It's decreasing. The concentration of A is decreasing as the reaction is progressing. Therefore, the rate of reaction will decrease as well. Okay, let's look at the design equation. This is the design equation for CSTR and this is the design equation for plug flow reactor written in terms of conversion. Now, what is volume proportional to? Is the volume proportional to the rate of reaction or to 1 over minus rate of reaction? Well, obviously it is to my 1 over minus rate of reaction, right? So it's inversely proportional. That means it will be very useful if we calculate 1 over minus RA. Okay, so here we go. Here we go. We have now 1 over minus Ra. So we took the kinetic data and now we added a third information that is 1 over minus Ra. And let's plot now 1 over minus Ra versus x versus conversion. And this is a very useful plot that is called the Levenspiel plot. Okay, this figure can be used to size flow reactors for different if a not. So regardless to if a not, because this will help us to evaluate this term or to evaluate this term. And after this evaluation, we can multiply it by if a not to get the volume. Before sizing flow reactors, let's get some insight into this figure. Okay. Let's take an isothermal reaction. For isothermal reaction, when the rate of reaction is greatest, let's see, when is it the greatest? Well, it's the greatest, obviously, at the beginning, right? In other words, the smallest 1 over minus Ra would be at the beginning. That's great. And we explained because the concentration of reactant is 
at the maximum value. What happens to the rate of reaction as the reaction progresses? Again, as we explained, the rate of reaction decreases. That means 1 over minus Ra increases. For irreversible reactions of greater than zero order, meaning for irreversible reaction where the rate of reaction is a function of concentration, what is the volume required to achieve complete conversion? If you want to achieve complete conversion, 100%, 100.00% conversion then what would be the required volume okay so to answer this question just take an example here let's take the example of this reaction okay or you can make it a goes to b that's fine either way okay so let's see if you want to achieve 100 percent conversion okay so let's see 100 percent conversion meaning as x approaches one what happens with the rate of reaction the rate of reaction approaches zero correct or 1 over minus Ra approaches infinity, correct? So this guy, this guy here would be approaching 0 when this guy approaches 1. And therefore, therefore, you know, a value divided by 0 will go infinity, right? Whether in this equation or in this equation. So, in fact, if you want to achieve 100% conversion, 100.00% conversion, you require a very large volume of a reactor. Okay? Okay, for reversible reactions, what is the maximum conversion? What is the maximum achievable conversion? Well, the maximum achievable conversion is basically the equilibrium conversion, right? And what is the rate of reaction and the required volume when x equals the equilibrium conversion? So the maximum achievable conversion for a reversible reaction is the equilibrium conversion. And what happens to the rate of reaction as you approach the equilibrium conversion? Well, we know that at the equilibrium, the forward rate of reaction equals the reverse rate of reaction. That means the net rate of reaction is zero, right? The net rate of formation of A or the net rate of consumption of A will be zero because the forward rate of reaction equals the reverse rate of reaction. Therefore, the net rate of reaction becomes zero. And if you plug zero here or here, then again, the volume required to achieve exactly the equilibrium conversion will be huge will be infinity right because any value divided by zero here will be in infinity okay again as x approaches the equilibrium conversion the rate of reaction approaches zero so this term approaches infinity therefore volume approaches infinity so this is some insight that we have gained by only looking at the design equations Okay, we're gonna now, in the following examples, we're gonna design CSTRs and plug flow reactors for a case where the entering molar flow rate is 0.4 mole per second. Therefore, as you can see in the design equation, this guy is always showing up, whether in the design equation of CSTR or the design equation of plug flow reactor. Therefore, we're gonna calculate a fourth row here which is if a naught over minus r a and we're gonna plug it into the table okay now we're ready to design some reactors we'll meet you in segment three to do so stay tuned